Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint and Fabrication. Well, back on Project Ruby and back on the firewall and compressor work. Uh, the compressor's still down. I'm waiting on parts, but uh, I'll take you guys over there, take a quick look. Uh, it wasn't as bad as I thought, uh, so, but I am waiting on parts. It's kind of hard to get any work done without an air compressor. But uh, I've already done some work on the passenger side over here, so what I want to do is catch up on that and then keep working, trying to get this fitted in real nice, and then we'll move over to the hard side over here, which is the driver's side. So uh, let's jump in here. We'll take a quick look at the compressor, uh, and then I'll catch up on what I've done, and then we'll get right back at it. Okay guys, here's the inside of my air compressor. Now remember this is an oilless, so there are sealed bearings on the end of these connecting rods. Uh, this is the counterweight right here, and this is actually the shaft of the electric motor. Okay, there's no belts, it's all direct drive. And so uh, this is just all open air, there's a plastic cover that goes over this. What I heard when it was shutting down was actually the cooling fan that was rattling. So this cooling fan is supposed to slide right over that counterweight right there and fit tight. And then there's a, a bolt right here in the center that holds it up against there. Well, it was rattling around like this uh, and it made a heck of a noise and I thought the thing was starting to come apart. Well, it wasn't. So I tore it, tore it apart and I thought, well, uh, while I've got it apart, it's uh, got 30 years on this thing and a lot of hours. So let's see if we can get some parts for it. So I did buy new cylinder sleeves and uh, the seal kit for the heads and the piston ring. Um, it's not even really a piston ring. It's more of a cup kind of a thing. Anyways, those were very, very affordable. So I got those, put those in, but unfortunately the uh, fan uh, is taking a little bit longer to get here. So uh, we're waiting on that. But I did kick this thing on and it did blow a lot of air out of the two ports here. Um, uh, I can't put those on until I can get the rest of it together. But uh, so we don't have any air right now. But uh, I, I think I'm repairing this whole thing for like uh, $50, $50, $45. So not a bad deal at all. All right, guys, really good news on the compressor. Uh, just have to wait a few more days to get my air tools back. I'm really missing them, I'll tell you what, trying to get stuff done. So I got the panel up there, and uh, I knew I needed to reposition it at the exact same spot every time. So I went ahead and drilled it and put some Clecos in it. So we got one on each end and uh, one in the middle. Those are eighth inch Clecos, so they'll hold it no problem. It's just hanging there. So that uh, gave me the opportunity to take it on and off every time and make sure it goes right back where I want it. So the next step was to go ahead and uh, just figure out how much waste I could cut off this side. Now that's about the center of the tunnel, so you know that's no big deal. So I kind of measured up and just cut that off and that got me to a point where uh, I'm not trying to handle so much material. And then, uh, then I could start figuring out what radius I want to do. So let me go ahead and pull this off real quick, and we'll talk a little bit about where we're at and where we need to go next. Okay, so uh, what I did was I bent this on a radius on a piece of pipe, and you can see my sample piece laying there, so I just kept bending it till that matched. As you can see here, all I used was a piece of pipe, some clamps, and a hammer to kind of bend that up to match that angle. And that's really it. So uh, that little sample piece, I just kept hold, holding it up to the car with a couple of straight edges, figuring out what angle I needed. Now, it did not bend exactly where I wanted it. I thought the radius would start a little earlier, but it started a little later. So, which is okay. We can always reclamp it and put the pipe back here and then uh, hammer on it some more and bring that radius around. Because w the way it's going to uh, work is on this one right here, the radius is already starting, okay? So it's not like that's gonna come around the corner and go to a flat. It's actually gonna come around the corner and keep going around the corner and the weld will be on part of the radius. So, uh, but our biggest issue is the way this whole thing is lined up. So as you can see, these are on different planes. So you can see right there, it comes and then it jogs in and then it comes to this one. So I sat and stared at this thing for quite a while trying to figure out what I wanted to do and ultimately I just said screw it, I'm going to cut it and start holding it up there and let it kind of tell me what it wants to do or I'll figure it out as I go. And so that's the game plan. So the one will come down around here and then this other one will come down and I don't know if I'm just going to let it come down and then uh, attach right here 
and then have this angle be a little different, I'm not sure. But uh, you can see how they kind of, uh, you know, dented that in and brought it over. So we're gonna kind of figure that out once it gets closer to uh, where it's supposed to be. Now that means that I gotta start trimming this because obviously I have way too much material there. So I'm gonna be back and forth for a little bit off camera, trying to figure this out, see if I need to bend that radius a little bit more uh, this far farther in and then we'll be good to go. But I'm not sure yet. So I need to maybe trim a little bit more so I can get that closer, but I can't trim so much that I have no leverage on that. So I gotta be careful. So it's gonna be on and off the car for a few times here. And then, uh, then we get down to some serious trimming and see if we can get this thing to fit up there real nice. All right, guys, I think I've got this rolled the way I want it. I'm not positive, uh, but um, you have to, you know, sooner or later give up and, and start trying to fit it up. So you can see some hammer marks along here. It doesn't matter. Only this radius is what matters right here. This is going to get cut off. So uh, I've held it up there. I marked down about a half inch lower. Uh, so hopefully we'll, we, this should be just about right to get us close enough to start uh, scribing it in and getting to fit, fit up real nice. So let me cut this off and uh, hold it up there. Hope I got it right. Find out how we did. Okay guys, we got that uh, trimmed off and up there I got a little clamp pulling it over there so it's a nice flat plane right straight across from the top all the way down to the bottom. A little clamp over here and uh, you can see the roll uh, but I do think the roll starts too late. I think I'm a little bit of trouble there so I need to, uh, we'll have to figure that out. But first what I need to do this is not flush. Uh, as you call, it's set down in a recess up to about here, and then it, they broke it over and it pushed inside. We're not gonna do that. We'll weld it, butt weld it right along here. But I do need to go on the inside and scribe it. We may lose the Clico. I may have to move it up a little bit, but uh, that's okay. And then we'll scribe that so this will sit down where it belongs, because the closer I get to where it's gonna ultimately go, it gets me that much closer to figuring this out because uh, with radiuses and 45s and strange angles, you trim off just a little bit and it goes a long way. So you gotta be very careful and sneak up on it. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and scribe that, cut it, refit it up on here, uh, figure out a way to tip this over. And now that I've cut so much off, I can't do it like I was doing it before. So I think I'll use that pipe like an anvil, lay that over the top and, and just tip that over, hopefully without uh, making it look horrible. So. Uh, let me get this scribed back up there and then we'll figure out uh, exactly where we're at. Okay, we got that trimmed and it's looking really nice. Uh, sitting flush, pretty nice seam right there. Shouldn't be a big deal to weld in. We did lose that Clico hole, so I moved it up. And uh, now that it's sitting flush where it belongs, I can tell that this radius should have started higher. It should have uh, probably at least a half inch higher is where the roll should have started. And that's on me, but it's a lot of guesswork when you're trying to figure this stuff out. So we can't uh, continue bending it like we were because it's all trimmed off. So what I did was I clamped the pipe to the welding table here. So it's on there secure. We're gonna lay that piece so the short side's right here and just try to tip that over. So hopefully we won't uh, ding it up or anything. I'm gonna hammer on the edge of it. And since that's gonna get trimmed and welded, it shouldn't be a big deal. I just want that radius to be nice and smooth because uh, that's the part that matters the most. So let me get that up there, get it up on the table here, try to figure something out and get that tipped over. Okay, I got the pipe clamped down and I've got uh, the panel clamped down as well so it doesn't move on me and mark so if it moves, I'll know. So I'm just gonna take dead blow hammer, try to concentrate on the edge so I don't screw up the part that's gonna show. Looks pretty good, didn't take much. Got a little bit more in the middle here to do. And I think we'll just about have it. It's 
Still looks pretty smooth. Not perfect, but pretty darn smooth. All right, I'm gonna quit messing with it before I screw it up. Let's go test fit it again. Okay guys, I think we got that roll just about right. It's coming right around where I, yeah, I think it's looking really good. Now this is bottoming out on this piece of 14 gauge right here. Remember it's supposed to sit flush when it makes its way around here. So we need to cut a notch here and then trim this all the way across here so it'll sit up against that other piece we left as a backer. And then that will bring this in really close because we're, we're getting really close on this side right here. So once we get this fitted, then we can start fitting this up and figure out how we're gonna make this transition right here that we talked about earlier. But, so let me go ahead and uh, get this scribed up. I mean, it's gonna be a little bit of guesswork figuring out where to cut this because I can't reach in there and scribe it exactly where I need to. But uh, a few measurements and uh, a little trimming and I think we can make it fit up. So let me knock that out and bring it right back. Okay guys, we got that trimmed up and it's looking pretty good, except obviously it's not touching. And that's because this is going up at a different angle. And either I tip this in more to meet it, or I uh, see this is at one plane and this is at a different angle. I think what I'm gonna do is put a parallel line to this piece right here, down here, and then we're gonna bend this piece out to meet it. Um, I think that's the best plan. What do you guys think? You agree? Okay, let's do it. All right, so let me, uh, let me get this marked, get this panel out of the way, and we're gonna figure out some way of clamping something on here and bending this down to meet this. I gotta figure out about how far it needs to bend first, probably out to this lip right here, and then till it's even with this one, so that'll give me some reference. So let me get that set up, we'll see what we can do. Yep, you're seeing that, right? I got my vise on there. I pulled it out of the welding table. It's the best thing I can figure to do it. I've got another vise, but I don't think I can fit it next to it. I'd have to unbolt it from the bench in the garage. So I'm gonna bend this a little bit, slide it over, bend it a little bit, keep going back and forth until this is even with this at the rest of it. So I've got plenty of leverage here and it's on there pretty tight. So I'm gonna just wanna bend a little bit and then move over and just keep going back and forth. So let's see what we can do here. It certainly bends pretty easy. Getting it lined up ain't so easy. This thing's heavy. I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. Ugh, if I don't get a hernia first, and that'll bring you back. We'll take a look what it looks like. Ugh. All right, the vice trick worked pretty good. That kind of bends and rolls out right here and meets this. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if I push it up there, it's pretty flush. I'd have to tap on it a little bit to get it more. I may bend it a little bit more, but I can't uh, finalize anything until I get this side down. This roll is actually hitting on the, the floorboard here and it keeping me from pushing it in all the way. So I was originally gonna trim this back, the panel here, but I think I'm gonna scribe this and cut the floorboard and so we can get a nice butt weld right there. The roll is really nice here, and it's coming down in a, uh, almost a perfect angle for the uh, floorboard, so I think that's our next step. And then, uh, then we can kind of push this where it belongs, and if we need to bend this a little more, we can, and then we can fine tune that and make this transition from one to the other. But uh, yeah, let me scribe that, cut that, and then we'll get this panel back on here again and see how it fits. All right, we got it looking pretty good here. If I pull that up just like that, the seam's not bad. It's a little tight here, and it's looking good over here, but I think I wanna bend this, put the vise back on there, and bring this out just a little bit more. Not much, just a tiny bit, but uh, I think we about got this side. It's looking pretty good. Okay, guys, I went ahead and put the vise back on there and bent that out just a little bit more, so now when the panel goes on there, that it goes around the roll and it's perfectly lined up. So once that's welded up and ground, it's gonna be beautiful. So basically this side is done. So I put the panel back up and I started marking it cause I need to kind of, you know, cut some stuff away so I can get the panel to sit flat. And so I started here. Oh, uh, and by the way, 
I really appreciate all of your concern about my finger. Lazy Hound got on me recently, and I appreciate it. Trust me. Um, you know, it does look a little sketchy when I'm using this thing without a guard. So I put the guard back on, but as you guys can tell, it's, uh, it took a diet. It's been on a diet. I cut it down pretty good, but it'll protect my fingers when I'm hanging onto the grinder right here, or the cutoff wheel. So uh, I do uh, really appreciate it. And this will keep me a little safer, though. I've got quite a few scars on my hands from uh, that thing nicking me. But anyways, I started uh, marking it out where I need to cut, and then I added an inch, but then I kind of got lost over here. And that's this area right over here. So I realized, well, you know what? I need to cut this stuff away that I'm not gonna keep. So I need to make some measurements and there's no way to get good measurements on this thing because you know it slopes up and down. So you see my contraption on there and that all it is is just a couple of boards and some clamps and I measured from where the fenders mount down to the board uh, on both sides. It was arbitrary number, didn't matter as long as they're both the same. And that gave me what I needed to measure down so I could start figuring some stuff out. So you see this white chalk line right here? It goes over here, touches there and goes over here. Now that's right where the panel's gonna come down, roll, and then go down and meet this panel and butt weld right into it. So that, that got me my, that point right there. Then you can see I've got some black lines here. So I need to cut down along here and along this black line and this little board up here gave me the, you know, so I can measure down and get that nice and parallel. So that's where we're at right now. I need to make this cut, get the panel back on there, and then kind of trace that out and then add a little bit so I can kind of chop off the extra on that panel and get it back up here and we can start figuring out where the roll is going to be and some other stuff. So uh, let me get some cutting done uh, with my cutoff wheel with the brand new guard on it and uh, then we'll see how it fits. All right guys, remember when I said you were supposed, I was going to add a little? Well, it helps if you put the line on the correct side. I, I had a line here and I went an inch the other way. So you can see a fresh weld right there. I had to put the piece back on. I held it up there. I'm like, ugh. So hopefully that's my one idiot move for the day and uh, we can move forward from this. So uh, we are sitting pretty good, but it's not sitting flush right here because there's a little lump right there and it's only about that big on the inside. So what I think I wanna do is take the panel off, see if I can smooth that dent out. That's kind of where the clutch arm and everything goes, but it's, it's only that deep. So if I smooth that out right there, so this will be nice, a fairly flat plane right there, I think that's a good move. And then I think we may bend this out like we did the other side. It's almost a zero here, but it kind of goes in. So I'm probably gonna bend that at a little bit of an angle so it's sticking out more here than there and that way it kind of comes up and meets the panel. Because remember, I want this to come off this angle right here and just flow straight. I don't want it to go and then turn and then turn. I'd rather it uh, just go flat until it hits and then we'll put the roll in to match the floorboard down there. So let me go ahead and rip this off, uh, lick my wounds from having to TIG weld that back on. Like, it, I can't believe I did it, but you know, it is what it is. So, uh, and then I'm gonna smooth that out, bend it, and then we can start marking this thing to get some closer cuts. Okay, we're getting somewhere now. So uh, I went ahead and cut all the way through both pieces of sheet metal and it was lean, leaning back this way. So I started moving it in. Uh, then I straightened it out and I had too much material here. So I cut a little sliver, a little pie wedge out and hammered it flat and it came out pretty good. So we're uh, actually on a pretty flat plane right there. We'll weld that up later, uh, but we're looking good. I went ahead and put the panel on and scribe to this line right here and then add it a quarter inch. So that piece should land right inside there. It may be a little long, I can always trim it. I don't wanna add any more back on. And then it'll go all the way down here and then the next thing we need to figure out is this. Once we get this, then we can start thinking about uh, putting our bend on here and we're kinda of downhill from that point on. So uh, let me get it back up and we'll take a look at it. All right guys, we are looking really good. It's sitting nice and flush right here and it follows all the way around. I had it off twice to go ahead and trim that up just a little bit. Now I'm super cautious about cutting too much, but uh, it fits on there really nice. I push down on that, that's flush right there. So we're going all the way down around here. Now uh, we got that little ear that's sticking out inside. So let's take a look on the inside real quick and then we can figure out what to do with that. Okay, so here's the little ear I'm talking about. I bent that out to the, towards the inside to get it out of the way because it was actually sticking out, uh, preventing the panel from laying flat. So I think what we want to do is bend it straight back till it's even with the panel here. And then I think what I'd like to do 
We've got this cut right here. I'm thinking I would just like to extend that cut straight up right there. Just make it easier on us and uh, hopefully make it so we can just kind of put the bend in there and have it come all the way down through there nice and smooth. So let's go ahead and get the panel off again and see what we can do with that little spot. Okay, so here's the little ear and I bent that back out so it's pretty much on the same plane. And I want to uh, bring this line up through here so I don't have a ruler or anything that'll make that kink. So I found this piece of scrap I cut off. And what I want to do is just lay it up on there. I've already put some Sharpie on there. So I'm kind of line that up and just use that. Get us a line. Now I only want to cut through this piece. I don't want to cut through that backing piece. Hopefully. If we do, it's no big deal. It'll be a butt weld right there anyway. So let me uh, see if I can peel this one away. We'll take the uh, cutter and we'll cut that off. So we have a nice straight line straight up through there. Make our welding and fabrication as far as bending and around and everything a lot simpler. So let me bust that out. We'll get the panel back up here and see how it's laying. And we're gonna start doing some more trimming and then finally get to the part where we put that roll in there. Okay, I've got it fitted on here pretty nice all throughout here. Now I. I've been trying to manipulate this piece so I don't have to make a bend across here. Unfortunately, uh, it's not possible. The inner fender well uh, bracket hooks right here and I'm not willing to modify this so much that I don't have a bend right here. So what we're gonna do is, I've already marked it, so we're gonna, this bend will match the one right here. So they'll be parallel, I mean, perfectly lined up. And then once we get this little, I don't know, that's a pinky's worth of bend right here. Uh, we'll get that. I'll figure out what angle I need. Then once we get this resting up against there, then we can do the second bend, which will bring this all the way back into the floorboard all the way. So let's go over to the welding bench, get the pipe set up, and uh, we'll get this bent right here. Okay, we only need to put that much of a bend in it. It's so not much. So I'm going to put a little tweak in it, pull all this off, check it, and go back and forth till we get it right. So I got some boards clamped on here, to hopefully to keep this uh, flat instead of just putting a big curve in it. So let's see if I can just muscle this here a little bit. I'm just kind of eyeball it. Looks like it probably went too far. That's a little bit too far, I think. Let's bend it back a little bit. That looks a lot closer. All right, I'm gonna pull all this off, double check it, and uh, keep t messing with it till it's right, and then we'll go back over to the car. All right, that worked out pretty nice. Got that broke over. I don't know if it's strong enough down here, but uh, we can always tweak it a little bit if we need to. Uh, that's where the tunnel is anyways, but we've got it down and it's matching this really nice right here. So let me go ahead and mark on the other side, uh, the next bend. So we can get down to the floorboard, get it bent, and hold it up there and uh, do some trimming. Get this thing finished. It's getting late. I'm getting hungry. Okay, of course, because it's getting late and I'm getting hungry, uh, I screwed this up twice. So you can probably see some hammer marks on there. I was way off on my first bend. Then I overshot on the second. I had to hammer it flat. So we're going to have some smoothing to do. It's flat, but uh, there's some hammer marks on it. So once I get an air compressor back, I'm going to have to smooth it out. But we're ready to trim. It's laying on there really nice. I got a magnet holding it up against the floorboard. So we are ready to trim that out and finish this thing off. Okay. Got quite a bit done today. Pretty happy. That's all rolled over there. And we got this done over here. I just finished trimming. And it's looking really good down through here. Uh, but we do have to transition from this brace, 14 gauge brace area back into the 19 gauge floorboard. And I really can't get that figured out until we uh, start doing the tunnel. Uh, this kind of rolls off right here and I need to be able to leave extra to kind of break that around. So, but we are looking really good. Let's take a quick look in the interior and wrap this one up. Okay, it's looking nice and tight over here. You can see right there where it's uh, kind of rolling away, so we need to figure all that out. But everything else looks fantastic. So we're doing really good. Just the tunnel's next, and it's gonna be interesting. So uh, stay tuned. 
Okay guys, that pretty much wraps up this video on getting the new panel uh, broke over and fitted to the uh, firewall. I think it looks really good. I'm really happy with the progress we made. A little tough on this side, a little back and forth, but uh, we got it done. The next step will be the tunnel. That's gonna be interesting. So uh, I don't know quite know how I'm gonna get, get it done, but we'll figure it out. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Mash that bell and drop me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you on the next one.